Okay, group hug. Welcome. Please come and join me on the sofa. Today I'm joined by Inbel Febish Wasma and she is head of Zurich, Goldfarg Seligman. Welcome. How are you? I'm very well. Thank you very much. Very happy to be here with you. Very happy to be broadcasted, you know, after this fantastic virtual City Wealth Awards ceremony. So here I am. Very pleased to answer any question you may want to ask me. Perfect. So let's crack on. Um, let's weigh in. So why don't you just tell us who you are? I know you have a really interesting niche practice with Israel. Um, so just tell us what you're doing, who you are. Tell us about the firm and give the viewers a lowdown on your history. Very pleased to be here today and very pleased to tell about myself and about uh, Goldfarb Zelligman in Zurich which uh, I created together with the tax department and a wonderful team in Tel Aviv about one and a half years ago. So we are a small little startup in a big firm. Um, I am practicing taxes and private client always in connection with Israel for the past 16 years. Many, many years of these are actually in Zurich in which I ended coincidentally by, and by a lot of stories that are all connected to private circumstances. But I'm very pleased to be here and for having the possibility actually to create something new like that and to be part of such a lovely team at Goldfarb Zeligman, which is the third largest law firm in Israel, has the largest tax department in Israel and one of the leading private client departments in Israel. And they have a fantastic team, which is also excitingly enough, one of the very few in the world that have more female than male. We are six female partners and five male partners, which is outrageous in the, in the financial industry as a whole. So that also is a point of little pride. Um, I've been advising individuals, families with Israeli connections throughout the world uh, for very many years now. And I also advise financial institutions, be it law firms, trust companies, family offices, asset manager, pension funds, insurances, banks on their Israeli related matter, be it on the tax side, on the estate planning side, of the wealth planning side, cross border. So that's in a shoestring who I am, although my private story is of course much more interesting. Well, we can move on to some of those later. So give us some themes that you're working on or perhaps some examples so that anyone watching can work out why they should call you or what sort of uh, concepts or business uh, problems or solutions that are being solved with yourself. Gladly. So just a couple of things that are at my desk at that very moment that come off my head now. I am advising a very lovely family actually from the UK moving into Israel now, planning and structuring the wealth pre-immigration. I'm helping a trust company in Switzerland to create a structure, which is a multinational family creating a trust and corporate structure in which one of the family members is Israeli. So we need to take care also on those matters. I'm helping another very wealthy family in, which has, I would say, holding and, and family members all over the world, mainly in Europe, actually, that invests into the startup scene in Israel, which we all know is very booming and active. So I look into their Israeli investments and helping them to, you know, uh, navigate through uh, this complex world. I advise a financial institution, in Europe, so we'll be a bit careful of not saying who it is, to uh, establish itself in Israel. And I advise them on the cross-border side, on the regulatory side, on the tax impact of what they are doing. So that's just a tiny bit of ideas of what's going on here. In general, our work is actually divided into advising families and individuals and advising financial institutions. So luckily, we see a little bit of both worlds. So that's actually very nice. And on investments into tech startups, because that's a, a big thing right now, what are the key things that people understand, your clients, or the three bits of great advice you would give them before they tackle this kind of uh, topic? First of all, when they are ready to do it, I think that this is a fascinating topic, which I very much support, is the introduction or the... Um, dialogue, let's put it that way, between wealth and innovation. This is something that I very much like and I very much support, although it does require a certain, certain 
bridge of cultures because these are totally completely different cultures. So once one, one gets into this um, scene or into this space of startups, first of all, I'm very happy that Goldfork can provide me uh, with all the knowledge and the technological knowledge and the legal background that we need because we have very strong departments that are dealing with those matters. And I also prepare clients that they have to learn how to work in a completely different pace without forgetting thinking about the tax implication of what they are doing. Luckily enough, Israel very much encourages foreign investments into the startup scene, but still even then we need not forget to do a proper due diligence and to understand what is one's position vis-a-vis -vis tax authority regulators and so on, and also to prepare the family entering into those matters. We need to look very much as far as taxes are concerned, in fact, into the notion of not creating a permanent establishment in Israel, being a passive investor. The Israeli tax authority has become very aggressive recently, and we need to think about it also when we, when we want to speak about, a, a, about investing into startups. In, we'll get, I guess, into that later when we speak a little bit about trends and what's going on in Israel. Yeah. But mm -hmm. if I have to give three takeaways on how to invest and how to do it in Israel is structure your wealth correctly, be advised on the tax implications that are, are at, and be ready for a different culture and a different pace as we are used to in passive investments in the, in the private banking world. So in terms of pace, you mean faster pace or slower pace? What's the... It's faster pace, it's a faster decision-making pace. Uh, but it's also, it creates a lot of creativity to the family. And what I like about it, that it drags family members into a different commitment that they used to have in the, so to speak, classical passive investments or in the normal family business way. It gives more space to family members to join in and to take part and to bring their, I believe, into the sin. Super interesting. So I just want to say to viewers, um, if you're enjoying watching this, please press the thumbs up and remember to subscribe and we'll let you know about other live sessions that are coming up and they're usually Tuesday 11.30 and also on Friday. So Inbal, let's have a look at the general environment. We've had lots of themes, uh, wills, uh, succession, divorce. What's your thoughts on the themes that your clients are asking you about? I tend to tell people that no matter at what age they are in life, they should take responsibility on their own future. So what I very often do is I start to have this discussion about wealth planning and estate planning at a very young age, because I perceive it really irresponsible if you are entitled to wealth or you are introduced to wealth or you are part of a well-off family or structure, you need to be prepared for that. And I want my clients to know always that whatever question that they have, we are with them for a long term. So we are running to them through their life, but I do want them to be prepared for whatever can happen. Therefore, we very much encourage clients to write the wheels, even if they're simple and they will get more complicated throughout the years. I very much recommend them to sign lasting powers of attorney because that is almost a commodity nowadays and it's so easy to do and it helps us in case of God forbid something happens to us in terms of capacity. And uh, I'm very much with the hands on the pulse of every client personal situation. So if something changes in the atmosphere and the regulation, we can bring it up and discuss it and get a little bit prepared in advance uh, before we are being surprised by new regulation or, or new law. Just as an example, for a very big change recently, Israel has started, the Israeli tax authority has started recently to ask for wealth declaration from trust structures, which is something that never happened before. So what we do is we alert already clients, even if they have not received any requests like that, that they should get prepared together with the trustees and the family advisor, that in case they're being asked, they already know how to answer and how to tackle it and how to create a proper declaration without having any issue with the tax authorities. So preparation, you keeping an eye on tax laws, just heads up and getting that ready so that there's no panics and decisions that have to be made quickly that might be regretted. Correct. And always, always be very much prepared into a more aggressive measures being taken. Because as in Israel, as in everywhere else in the world, 
we are facing now a more aggressive environment that we, use, we used to have before COVID time. Because in the end of the world, us all taxpayers will have to bear the costs of the situation now. And obviously, the wealthier you are, probably the burden on your shoulders will be higher and you need to get more prepared. So for me, preparation is not only taxes, it's also very much into the wealth and estate planning, the choice, where do you want to reside, the family discussion along, how do we want to deal with business and how do we want to transfer it to the future generations to come? And in general, I always look into that world from the well-being perspective. Whatever makes you happy, we will support it from a legal and tax perspective. Cool. And on an international theme, where are your clients looking? I'm talking Israeli clients. Where are they looking externally? And also clients who are looking at coming into Israel. What, what sort of connections are you seeing? I see very many, very many connections because one has to understand that almost in every... Let's divide it that way. Every Jewish family has an Israeli connection, more or less. So my clients are very much spread throughout the world, be it Australia, South Africa, Canada, North America, Latin America, Central Europe, the UK, obviously. Uh, they all look into Israel, either from an investment perspective or also from a family planning perspective, be it because one of their family members is there, be it because one of them actually wishes to move and change its residency to Israel, you know, and enjoy this fantastic uh, tax exemption that applies to new and returning Israeli residents and be it because they are just looking into the country and want to take part of this booming scene that we are uh, uh, experiencing for the last 20 odd years. So tell us about the tax exemption. That sounds like something people need to know. I'll gladly tell you about the tax exemption and I will also tell you a little bit about where does it all go. Um, new residents and veteran returning residents, which are uh, people who actually lived in Israel and returned after living abroad for more than 10 consecutive years, are entitled when they return to Israel or when they're coming in the first time for 10 years of tax exemption and reporting exemption from all their non-Israeli sourced income and assets. And I give a strong emphasis here of non-Israeli non sourced income. The reason for that is because Many people who have immigrated already to Israel are planning to do so, forget along the way that whatever they do in Israel is subject to taxes and is exposed. And a small little hand on the pulse must be you know, given also, a small little attention must be given also to do your doing when you're in Israel. Because if you keep on running a business abroad when you're in Israel, this is fantastic and we fully support it. However, one has to be very careful not to create a permanent establishment in Israel, which is something that the tax authorities are very strongly looking at nowadays. Another thing that we do anticipate that would happen in the very near future is that although I personally believe that the 10 years of exemption is here to stay, that applies only to the tax exemption. Reporting exemption would probably go away one way or the other after appropriate change in legislation. The reason for that is that Israel is a member of the OECD and the OECD does provide a lot of pressure in addition to uh, internal uh, uh, political and other uh, pressures in Israel that create a situation in which probably the reporting um, obligation or the, sorry, the reporting exemption will be abolished and we would stay only with the 10 years of tax exemption in Israel. In that con context, I also want to say something. Very many people that actually moved to Israel had this maybe a little bit of idea that after 10 years of exemption, they will move on in, in their life and will decide to leave Israel. My experience is that after immigration, being an immigrant myself, in a way, immigrant to Switzerland, I say that immigration has its toll, no matter from what background you are, no matter in what age. And the older you get, it gets more complicated. Therefore, I, I experience more and more people that after the 10 years of exemption, they decide to stay and really settle in Israel. And this is something that, of course, I very much encourage. Once one decides not to stay, we need to take under consideration that, uh, that leaving the country after more than 10 years with it encounter an XT tax. And this is again something that the tax authority are putting a lot of emphasis nowadays and they're 
actively uh, trying to change now the legislation. So we anticipate a very big change in international taxation in Israel, part of which will be most probably much harsher measures in connection with exit tax. I see. So be warned, uh, it's not a quick and easy solution. And I agree with immigration. It's, it's not so easy, is it, just to pick up and leave. So Bitcoin and crypto, do you know anything about those topics? Yes. Well, um, two things that I want to say about crypto uh, would be the following. First of all, in terms of tax planning, Israel is quite advanced also in how they perceive cryptocurrency as an asset or, you know, or as a product or uh, as, as a mean of also as a mean of payment, uh, which is something very uh, unique that the tax authority has done by accepting in a way crypto as a mean of payment in some cases. So we are advanced of it, although honestly, there is still a lot of unknown on that on that topic. What we do see and we do experience a lot is a, a lot of new wealth owners that actually generated the wealth in various innovation connected to crypto, not only by investing merely into the Bitcoin or any other uh, cryptocurrency, but also by providing technology and innovation around that space. This is, by the way, relevant both to Israel and to Switzerland, which are, I would assume nowadays, the leading countries in that industry in the world. So I'm lucky enough to see it in both sides of the coin a little bit. And the Israelis and the Swiss are very much completing each other, complementary to each other in the way they look at technology and they look at innovation. Everyone brings his own skills to the table. Very exciting. Yes, I agree. And I completely, I know Israeli is usually a hub for uh, amazing tech entrepreneurs, isn't it? But for sure, Zurich, uh, in my head totally, has become a world leader on that topic. So post-COVID, post-COVID, can I ask your thoughts? What, how do you see the world shaping up in two or three years? On the wealth industry side, I believe that um, Israel will still be one of the more booming economies and the ever-growing economies in the world. First of all, because eyes are in Israel in terms of innovation, but not only because, uh, again, if I speak a little bit about the Jewish population and the families that I'm, I've been working with, be it entirely Israeli resident or mix of different nationalities, including Israel, I see that there is a strong connection to the country and a strong will to show growth and to act for growth. And that together with innovation in a good spirit and hopefully a, a very good advice that helps you to deal with the regulation and to prepare yourself properly. I do believe that we are going into ever growing and stronger uh, industry and to a bigger and larger uh, wealth sector because as I guess everyone that watches is know now, uh, very big part of the wealth in Israel is not necessarily based on legacy or what we call in the industry old money. Some of this is, but not all of it. And uh, what we are trying to do also through our firm and also through our work with clients and also by the way that we see the advice that we are giving is also to support the younger generation to create and to invest and to search uh, to get themselves involved in industries and in themes that they believe in and that they, then they can develop in order to create an ever-going industry in Israel. However, we need to take under consideration that on the other side of the same story, there is also the regulator and the legislator that also are trying, of course, to live as much taxes or to take care of the regulation to their advantage. So we all need to sit together and to find a way in which we can weather the storms and make sure that everyone is more or less prepared and uh, its needs are being answered. So just to finish off, give us three top level, fantastic reasons why people should look about re relocating to Israel. If I would have to laugh, I would say the people, the people and the people. But honestly, we have a fantastic human capital the um, regulation and the possibility to support and to grow into the country is fantastic. The food is great, but this is again, my personal view. And I do think that what is beautiful about Israel is that uh, for good and for bad, 
everything is negotiable. So we can discuss and we can come to an agreement and we can adapt all of us, we and the industry and the regulator and the tax authority together and find a way that suits, uh, you know, a measure that suits everyone. Thank you so much, Inbel. It's been a pleasure having a chat with you today and I look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you very, very much. Thank you so much for joining us on our live session today. Don't forget to press the thumbs up and subscribe. We have these uh, live sessions twice a week, Tuesdays and Fridays. Follow us on LinkedIn, on Instagram and also on Twitter.